Good evening and welcome uh, to the June 6, 2023 meeting of the Town Council of Smithfield. At this time, I would like to call the meeting to order and ask Dr. David Barber uh, to lead this in the invocation. If you would please stand, and we're going to follow this with the Pledge of Allegiance. Let's pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this opportunity we had that we can come as a town and meet and talk about business of the town. I pray, Lord, that everything we do be done in a way that brings uh, glory to you and also to our citizens. Lord, that everything be done in a fair and impartial way that uh, all of our citizens can benefit from the actions of what we do. For it's in the mighty name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. see the agenda before you. Are there any amendments or adjustments to the agenda? I know currently there are two known changes. Uh, one to add consent agenda num item number 12, consideration and request for approval to award a bid in the amount of $4,752 to Clegg's Pest Control for Pest Control Services and authorize the town manager to execute the contract. And also business item number five, consideration and request for approval to adopt the year-end budget amendment. Are there any more known changes at this time? Mayor Pro Tem, I'll make a motion. If there's no other changes that we approve the agenda as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you. At this time, there are no presentations to make. Uh, we will move into the public hearings. Uh, the one public hearing we have tonight is the fiscal year 2023-2024 budget in accordance with North Carolina General Statute 159.12b for adopting the budget ordinance. The Town Council shall hold a public hearing at which time any persons who wish to be heard on the budget may appear before the board. Mr. Manager, uh, I entertain a motion to open the Public hearing. I make a motion to open public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. Mr. Manning. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Council. Before you tonight, we have the public hearing presentation for the 2023-2024 budget proposal. This budget proposal was made public on the 17th of May. Everything that uh, has been completed in this uh, budget process meets with state statute and the budget requirements therein. Some highlights of the budget um, as presented on the 17th. As is required in North Carolina, all of our funds are balanced. When I say balanced, I mean it's the same amount of dollars coming in as going out. So our revenues match all of our expenditures. In the general fund, which is your basic working budget, which includes police, fire, public works, parks and rec, um, information technology planning, all of those core services, is about just under $17 million. The electric fund, which is an enterprise fund, ran more like a business, is about $16,700,000. The water and sewer fund, which is also an enterprise fund, run more like a business, is just over $10 million. The property tax rate remains stable as it has for many years at 57 cents. We do have some small fees, it's 2% increase average in electric fees and charges. We also have a 4% water fee increase and sewer fees have been adjusted for cost of service for the average Citizen, residential citizen, that's actually a decrease of about nine cents per month. And we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, we have an 11 cent sanitation increase. That is to match the $1 per ton <coughs> increase that the county is charging 
us as well as other wholesale customers for landfill tipping fees. The general fund balance remains above 25%, uh, fund balance remains above 25% fiscal requirements as provided by the council uh, back in 2012. Um, we have necessary capital expenditures included in the budget, which is 1.4 million in the general fund, about 650,000 in the electric fund, and about 1.6 million in the water and sewer fund. Uh, for employees, their medical benefits were kept at the same level, and this budget includes a salary adjustment of 2% in July and up to a 2% merit increase in, in or around January 1st. Uh, it also maintains the longevity that the council added as a benefit two years ago. So major capital expenditures that are included in the budget. For the police department, we have two police cars. Um, the building expansion, which continues to be ongoing, should be done right around the 1st of July or in July at some point, and we will be able to occupy that side of the building. Uh, for the fire department, we have a replacement fire engine. Uh, we have two engines that are over 20 years old. Um, what we are doing here is the fire engine replacement is actually going to cost the town about $900,000. We will order that fire engine. We will put $300,000 into a capital improvement fund this year, hopefully $300,000 in the next two years, which would be the 900,000. We expect it being three years from the time of order to the time of delivery for that fire engine. Uh, that's how far behind supplies and, and um, uh, personnel charges are for making these fire engines at this time. We also have $105,000 for turnout gear, which continues to increase in price for the firemen, and we have $77,000 in extrication tools, which are going to go on the rescue truck, the heavy rescue truck, which is actually part of the current year budget. Should take delivery of that sometime around first of the year 2024. That's been on order for a year now. Uh, on our public works, we have our annual street resurfacing and our pile bill, $289,000. Um, I anticipate that may go up uh, in the legislature right now. There's an a increase of up to 20% uh, of pile bill funds to be provided to municipalities and counties throughout the state. So our hope is that that, that is going to increase uh, maybe by 20%. Um, when the legislature approves its budget. Uh, we have one replacement sanitation truck at $300,000. We had another sanitation truck in the current budget, which has been ordered, and we are still waiting delivery on that. So that'll be two new sanitation trucks within two years. Um, we have a mower for the Public Works General Services. And we, for Parks and Rec, we have $75,000 repairs to the American Legion hut down here that the new little theater uses, um, $30,000 for improvements to the dog park in that area, and $18,000 for soccer field drainage out at Community Park. The pool and the splash pad resurfacing at the Shrac, they're estimated to cost us seven, almost $76,000. That is part of this budget as well. Some other major capital expenditures for the water plant are East Smithfield water line improvements. We've been putting money away for this every year to increase the water uh, lines uh, over on the other side of 95 in East Smithfield so that we can start to create development in that area. Uh, the water plant expansion and improvements were just completed. Um, I, and I'll announce it now and still later that the Greenway is fully back open and been repaved, so that is fully operational at this point as well as part of that project. Uh, the Water Sewer Department, we have our inflow and infiltration reduction at $200,000. That helps us keep our pipes um, free of rainwater or groundwater seeping in and increasing our sewer fees. Uh, this station repair for $150,000, uh, 
uh, our normal AMI next grid for 250,000. Other water line upgrades throughout the town is additional $200,000. We have a half a dump truck. We put a half a dump truck away last year, $75,000. We're gonna put it away this year so we can purchase it, $150,000 out, out of next year's budget. In our electric, we have a voltage conversion project that is ongoing. Uh, we have $400,000 there. Um, we have $50,000 for a load management as well as $200,000 for half a budget bucket truck. That's the great big bucket truck that you see running around when the electric guys are up on the poles. That's a $400,000 purchase. We'll put $200,000 away now. We anticipate it'll be a year before that's built and available to us. So next year we'll put a the other 200,000 back so we can purchase that truck once it's delivered. Um, some issues on personnel and debt. Uh, we did not add any new positions to this budget. Uh, everybody is, is status quo. All the positions that are in each department um, have not been increased. Um, we did not add any additional debt to this budget. So we're not taking out loans for anything um, everything is being paid for, uh, as you see presented here tonight. The water plant was just completed. Uh, two new sanitation trucks purchased. I mentioned that last year and then this year. And the fire engine is being budgeted at $300,000, but it is a $900,000 total expense in 2027. And along with the electric truck, which will be purchased in two years, um, $200,000 going to the electric capital project fund uh, for that this year. Major budget issues, no change in tax rate. That 57 cents will remain stable this year. The 11 cent residential increase in sanitation due to the wholesale rate increase by the county. Electric rate increase, an average of 2%. It's been a long time since we have done anything with electric rates other than reduce them. Um, this is still going to keep Smithfield's electric rates lower than just about anybody around us. Our water rate increases are averaging an additional 4% increase and the sewer cost of service changes. Um, we are not transferring any money from enterprise funds uh, to the general fund. So the money that you pay in fees for water, for sewer, for electric, they go solely for that purpose. They do not come back and pay for police officers or firemen or equipment or anything, parks and rec, any of those things. The fees are totally used for those enterprise funds. So if you picked up one of the sheets over here, you have this <coughs> in front of you, this table. Um, this kind of shows, on average, what those increases are going to amount to. So if you are an average customer, and these numbers are a little bit high for the average customer, but if you use 4,000 gallons of water a month, your, your water bill is gonna go up about 98 cents. Um, your sewer bill is gonna go down about nine cents. Uh, your trash collection, as we've mentioned, is gonna increase by 11 cents. The 2% in your electric rates increase for 1,000 kilowatt hours per month, that's probably a little high as well, is about $2.09 increase. So for districts one, two, and three, your monthly utility bills are gonna go up on average about $3.09. Um, for district four, since we don't provide electric service there, those bills are going to increase by about a dollar a month. Um, but they're probably gonna go up a whole lot higher once Duke Energy raises their rate. <laughs> Um, some, some Smithfield, you know, our government entity and our enterprise funds and, and Lawrence is here for the Public Works Department, the supplies that we purchase, whether it's fuel or uh, parts for vehicles or parts for pump stations for the sewer department, um, all those things are increasing for us too, just like you all see it at the grocery store and you see it everywhere else. Um, the town is not immune to those increases. And that's why you're seeing a couple of these small increases now. 
But I can assure you that the council takes any of these things very seriously, and they try not to increase anything more than what the cost of service is. So whatever that cost of service is, we have to be balanced, like I said in the beginning of this presentation. The budget has to have the same amount of revenue coming in as the expenses. And as expenses go up, we have to deal with that revenue side too. There's nothing else we can do with it. Um, while we are growing, uh, those things are helping us. Um, but with growth comes increased expenses as well. Um, but it's our goal to try to keep Smithfield the hometown that it is, the hometown feel that it is. We're not interested in being a big city, um, but we do want to be able to provide premier services to the citizen, and we're working very hard to do that. Some comparisons for property taxes. You can see here that this, our property taxes have increased every year, while our rates haven't increased our growth has. A lot of our economic development, the new hotels, uh, Amazon, uh, some of these bigger businesses that you see, they're paying property taxes and, and these numbers are going up considerably. That helps us keep rates down, our tax rate down for all of you. Sales tax history, you're seeing that increase as well. In 2021, it, it shows a little dip there, but that's really not an accurate depiction of what happened because 2022 started a little early, so some bills that should have, some revenues that came in right at the tail end of 2021, 2022 ended up on 2022. So that's why that number's high, 21's low. But you're seeing a steady increase there in sales tax, that's good for us. That means that the out, outlet center's doing well, hotels are doing well, our, any sales in town are, are doing pretty well. These are our fund balance sheets. This kind of tells us where, for lack of a better term, our savings is um, for each fund. The red is the electric fund at the bottom. You can see it stays pretty steady at 60%. The blue is a general fund. That's the biggest um, service that we have with, again, police, fire, parks and rec, all those things. Um, we're still at a, almost 80% there at the end of 2022. Our water and sewer fund is the orange line that jumps way up. That's a little bit artificial because we had loan money in there for the water plant. Now that that's bent down and the water plant's built, we expect that to come down more around that 100%, 100% range which is still a very high fund balance. Local government commission likes to see us at no less than 12%. So we're way doing very well at maintaining savings um, for the town. General fund allocations, this chart kind of divides it all up. Um, so you'll see your police and fire, if you put those together, you're at about 45%. That takes up almost half of your entire budget. Um, after that, you have about 22% for park or for uh, public works, uh, which is your sanitation, your streets, your uh, uh, power bill money that fixes the streets, uh, your storm water, and your general services. Also, the garage fits in there as well. And then parks and rec would follow that. They're about 15% of the budget. Uh, that makes up about 85% of your budget between those things, leaving about 15% for everything else in town. Public safety is at 45, public works at 22, parks and rec at 15. We have about 3% debt, and I'm going to show you a chart here in a minute that shows all the debt in the town. And, you know, that is a very good figure for the town. Uh, we have 2% of contingency in this budget. What that is is unappropriated funds um, so that if something comes up that we didn't foresee, um, we can use that money without having to, you know, dig into our savings. So we keep a little bit of money there to make sure that any changes that come up, you know, we can't foresee everything that's going to come up in the next 365 days. So those things that happen that we didn't foresee, we do have money there to afford to pay for it. 
Um, Non-department, which is mostly our donated items, um, money that uh, we're using, some of it goes to DSDC, some of it goes uh, to just individuals like Harbor, uh, individual companies like Harbor, um, uh, as well as some school money um, and, and some other various items. All other budget, it's only 6% of the budget. Our water sewer fund um, is primarily made up of the water sewer distribution. That's the red at the bottom. It's about 58% of the budget. Uh, the blue slice on the top right-hand side is what it costs us to run the water plant. That's about 29% of our budget. Our debt here is about 10%. Um, quite a bit of that will drop off in about two years. Most of that debt is from the water plant improvements that we made. And 3% of contingency in this budget. For the electric fund, as you can see, the big blue circle, that's electric services. So 97% uh, of this just goes to services and running that department. 2% is debt, and 1% uh, is contingency. This is the chart I was talking about. This is all the debt that the town has currently in all funds. The top of it is the general fund. The middle there is the water and sewer fund, and the bottom is the electric fund. The interest rates you can see are all, um, I think our highest interest rate is 3.875, and that's a USDA loan for a fire engine. Um, but most of these are around 2% or lower. Um, so we really did a good job. Staff really did a good job, uh, Greg and Siler and his group, of renegotiating a lot of this debt when the interest rates were way low here about six to eight months ago. Um, we do have some known changes to the proposed budget as it was provided on the 17th. Uh, that I would ask the council to uh, amend tonight. In the general fund, uh, last week we had a Dectron unit fail at the Shrac. The Dectron unit is the big thing in the ceiling when you go in there, and that controls all the humidity in the building. Um, it quit working. Uh, there's some components inside that are broken and need to be fully replaced. Uh, that we split this cost with the school system. So this is like a $98,000, the $46,380 is our portion of the repair. Uh, and it's not something that we can put off. Uh, if the humidity increases in that building, the pools aren't going to operate right and the building is going to suffer. So it's something that needs to be done. So we've added it into this budget rather than try and take it out of contingency next month. Um, and what we did was we added restricted fund balance for revenue to pay for that, that is restricted just for parks and recreation. In the water and sewer fund, uh, we have been operating on a estimate for our uh, workman's comp and liability insurance from the League of Cities. Um, we got those figures just last week and they are increased more than what we budgeted. So we see an increase in work comp insurance in the water and sewer fund of $17,680. Um, we have adjusted the wholesale water sales revenue to account for that. Um, so the wholesale water that we sell to our, right now the only customer we have is the county. Uh, we're, we estimated those numbers low anyway, so we feel very comfortable with raising that revenue number uh, by that amount to pay for this. Um, electric fund, we have the same amount of increase uh, in the work comp insurance, and what we did there was decrease our voltage conversion cost by that same amount in order to pay for it. So your, but the budget ordinance for electric didn't change at all. It just moved money around. Um, in your packets, council, you have a budget ordinance. That budget ordinance in your packet has these revisions in it. I would open it up to any questions 
you might have. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Yes. Any questions from the council at this time? Comments? Questions? Mayor Pro Tem, I'll make a few comments. Um, Manager Scott, thank you for uh, presenting the budget um, and the summary that entails with that. And I just want to make for the record that uh, we spend a lot of time on this budget and it's uh, always hard. We have to change the fees for the customers, but I still appreciate you saying, I'd like to re-say that our um, intention is to keep it as a reasonable as price as possible to maintain the service without bankrupting the town or the accounts. and. Uh, those enterprise funds with the water plant expansion, I really struggle with us having to increase fees at this point, but I understand, as Mr. Credo presented to us, the significant increase in just production of water. If we hadn't even expanded our water plant, it's my understanding that wouldn't even been a factor. We still would have had to do that with the chemicals and those type things that we have seen the increase in. But uh, yeah. I just want to extend my gratitude to you and your staff for uh, the effort and the time that you've put in this budget. Well, thank you, Councilman. I appreciate you bringing that up. That increase in the water sales is predominantly because of the increase in chemicals that we are using to make the water, to purify the water. If you were to look in the budget and go line by line, you would see that increase for next year over this year in chemical costs. And we can't, all those chemicals unfortunately come from the same country and it's not the United States. So it's very hard for us to try to get a decreased cost on that. We're kind of stuck with the prices they give us, and they have gone up tremendously over the last year. Uh, Mr. Ma Mr. Manager, I also would like to say that um, I appreciate the staff because one of the things that, that I know we had a tremendous amount of increase in our cost for building of the police station. We're still trying to finish over there. Uh, because of stuff, but I also understand that uh, our uh, water facility was built within the budget. That's correct. Including all the, uh, with all the things going on, was able to maintain that, and that's a credit to our staff and to their hard work to maintain that. And the town's people, people don't think about it, but if that went up, it costs all of us money. So that, that even though it doesn't show anything, really, we, the town of Smithville saved money because it did not go up, whereas everything else around us has gone up. So I think that we owe you know, support from town staff and, and uh, you know, Craig, Ted, your, your people, the efforts you guys made. I don't see Ted here. Yeah, there's over there. I mean, that's a tremendous amount to keep that going. It, was, it says a lot. So I think that's important to show that our town, not only do we have these budget, we balance the budget, but also the staff works diligently to keep those prices from going up on us, causing us to have to charge. Some things are out of our control. I mean, the police station has been out of our control. We didn't know about it. But um, uh, it could have been the same way for the water facility. That's what I'm saying. It did not. So we appreciate all the hard work you guys did to, to do that. I know I appreciate it as a taxpayer not to have to increase our taxes to cover the bills. So thank you. Thanks for saying that. Anything further from the council on this matter? No, it's been such a long process. I feel like I say something about it. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but uh, thanks to uh, Manager Scott, the staff, and the council for 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 um, all the time put in behind this big budget. Uh, it seems like we're brushing through it up here as much time as we spend on it, but I mean, just uh, I'll just be sitting here repeating what everybody else has already mentioned. It's been a um, very healthy town financially. Um, a lot of great staff all over who help keep us all in line, so just I feel confident with it what's in front of me that the citizens are getting the best that they deserve, so thank you. Thank you. All right, if nothing else from the council at this time, we'll open it up to public comments on the budget. If anyone would like to speak on the matter, please come to the podium and state your name. Not seeing any. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to close the public hearing. I'll make a motion to we'll close public hearing. Second. All in favor? Aye. All right. What is the pleasure of the board at this time? I do have a couple of questions on... <laughs> Mike, with the um, known amendments 
like you call them revisions, that will come in the adopted budget. So we can, ad with the intent to have this adopted before July 1, your adopted budget will reflect that, even though it's in the on the record. Is that correct? Yes. If you adopt the budget ordinance that is in front of you, that will include those changes. Okay. And the other question that would go along with that is historically we've done the fee schedule separate. Is that still your intention? Yes. Okay. Mayor Pro Tem, uh, since there's no other comments, so I will make a motion that we adopt the fiscal year budget as presented with the known changes that he's mentioned tonight. It's in our message. I second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 And the fee schedule, we need to vote on that at the same time. That's correct. The fee that. schedule is unchanged from the proposed budget that was provided to the council back on the 16th. Um, they're it's already revised, correct? Yes. Uh, that's what I thought. So those, those uh, changes for the sewer, water, and, and uh, electric, as well as the uh, sanitation fees have already been in there. Uh, there is no added changes to the fee schedule. So unless there's questions, I know we've had lengthy discussions on the fee schedule already. Um, I'd be more than happy to try to answer them, but I, uh, I think you all know what's in there. Any questions for Mike on that? All right. Mayor Pro Tem, I do have a couple comments, and you, you and I have discussed this. Um, when it comes to the enterprise fund, specifically the water sewer rates, um, the UFS the, uh, study or the review pretty much recommended the they, they do the balanced model. I just think it's, it's extremely important for us to stay focused on keeping those rates as low as possible. And when you start changing the user fee versus the flow fee, people don't have control over that. And I, and I see the revisions that you made, and I think it's very reasonable. Um, I think you compared it to a couple, maybe $1 for your average house. But uh, I just wanted to say that for the record. I think it's important for us to stay focused on keeping those rates, especially those service fees. Um, that is a big deal. And um, it, it, it changed very little, so that's a good thing. But that's all I have. Anything else relating to the fee schedule? <coughs> what is the pleasure of the board of relating to the fee schedule? Did we have to vote on I thought the fee, fee, fee schedule was already built into the budget. No, we have to do it, sir. Okay. I make a motion we approve it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor Pro Tem. At this point, we will open up the meeting to citizens' comments. I would ask that anyone wishing to speak uh, please limit their discussion to three minutes and please state your name at the podium. I know there are at least two people that have signed up to speak, so. Yeah. Uh, hello, my name is Ben Chapman. Uh, I live at 346 Viewcrest Way in Raleigh, and for the last four years I've been working here in Smithfield. Uh, I'm here to talk about recent local events that are connected to an alarming national trend. Uh, today, in fact, the largest LGBTQ plus civil rights organization in America took the unprecedented step of declaring a national state of emergency for LGBTQ plus Americans. If you're confused and don't know why the human rights campaign would take such actions, look no further than two local incidents. The incident that caused the cancellation of the in-person Y'all Means All Festival is this. On the morning of Thursday, May 18th, a poster went up advertising the festival. Within minutes, a group of men arrived and proceeded to bang on the glass of a local business. They entered and belligerently used anti-LGBT rhetoric and confronted the owner, causing them to fear for the safety of staff and customers. 
I've worked in that block of downtown Smithfield for four years, and at 9 a.m. on most Thursday mornings, the only foot traffic is locals going to work. So I need all of you all to understand that this wasn't a spontaneous action by individuals. The event was canceled because a group of bigots had advanced knowledge of when this poster would be displayed and used threatening behavior and slander to accomplish the goal of stopping the event. More recently, on the first day of June, at least three transgender pride flags were hung on bridges above I-95 here in Johnston County. These flags had red paint alluding to blood, as well as a white power symbol painted in yellow on the corner of each flag. The bigots threatening people traveling in Johnston County want us to know that they are white supremacists. Leaders in the town of Smithfield and Johnson County must act to reject white supremacy and reject bigotry. If you want to support the student leaders, there are two things that you can do. First, you can participate in the virtual Pride Festival because the show must go on. Uh, this Friday and Saturday, they're going to be having an open mic and live performances. Secondly, consider that they have asked local businesses and organizations to uh, commit to a Pride to History pledge where, in essence, they will fly a rainbow flag from LGBT Pride Month in June to LGBT History Month through October. Uh, but if you really want to enact meaningful change that will permanently protect our community, you will consider adopting an inclusive non-discrimination ordinance here in the town of Smithfield. Uh, join 22 other communities in North Carolina because JOCO is ready for non-discrimination protections. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chapman. Good evening, I'm Maureen McGinnis. I'm president and CEO of the Triangle East Chamber of Commerce and I'm also a resident at 908 Second Street in here in Smithfield. And I'm here before you tonight to um, speak my support of the uh, farmer's market. I think that uh, the experiment of the farmer's market was uh, a huge success. Um, it brought a lot of business to our businesses in, uh, in downtown Smithfield on a Saturday. Each I went to each of uh, the farmer's market experiments, and it was a wonderful sense of community, but also in addition to allowing the farmers to have an opportunity to share their wares, um, each of our shop owners' restaurants also had um, a tremendous amount of foot traffic on that day. And as our town manager talked about our tax revenues, this added bonus of foot traffic um, is, is certainly uh, helping the town itself. Um, it was a wonderful experiment. And as an aside, as someone who relocated down here, when I first came down here, I was looking for a great um, farmer's market. And so we tried all of the different <coughs> farmer's markets, and none of them were what I was looking for. But now, Smithfield has one. Um, and I think it's another thing that just really puts us on the map as the county seat. Um, so I really encourage you to um, make this permanent, as in going to uh, through October. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. McGinnis. Hi. My name is Michiko Duff. I am a resident of Johnston County. I am here because I wanted to bring a, um, an event, a community of awareness event surrounding, this is the kids that are dying here in our county because of the drug dealers that are here selling fentanyl. These are all our kids. And this is my daughter. She was murdered and left alone in the Selma Housing Authority in Selma, North Carolina. So what I have done is took my pain and put it into purpose. And I travel all around the United States bringing awareness. And I've been doing that for the last year. But God has been working on me, telling me that I need to bring more awareness right here where I live. So my thing is that I want to bring a community awareness event down in the Smithfield area. It's down in the bottom by the railroad track. And I want to bring it there because I want diversity all across the board. We need to know that in the low-income poverty 
area that they need to know that there is resources out here. There's help out here. There's another way out besides selling drugs, becoming gangbangers. And I want to let them know to stand up and take back our community. And I want them to know that there's somebody out there that looks like them, me. We are not exempt from this drug. And we need to stand up and speak up, because I know I am not the only one that's African American in Johnson County that this has happened to. But my daughter is the only one that's on the Joko Angels billboard that's African American. And I feel like it's my duty to go back in my communities and bring out and let everybody know that this drug is out there. No man left behind. My saying is that if we can stand up and say black lives matter, we can stand up and say all lives matter. Because if we do not stand up and take this thing back, they're attacking our line of defense. We must fight back as a community, hand in hand. It doesn't matter what your race, creed, religion, all lives matter. And our border is under attack. And that is what I want to say. I want to bring awareness. And I have teamed up with the um, DEA agent in Atlanta, Georgia. And um, he's willing to come. I asked. They already got approval to come. And Joko Angels, Selma Police Department, Detective Voss, we work very closely together in bringing down those criminals around there. And I don't, you know, it is what it is. And I work with the Smithfield Police Department as well, letting them know that they're not alone, that I support them. And I want to bring everyone else along with us. Because like I said, all lives matter. And I feel like this event will save lives. So please approve it. Thank you for hearing me. Thank you for your effort, ma'am. Anyone else wishing to speak tonight? If not, we will close the citizens comment section and move into the consent agenda. At this time, I'd entertain a motion to approve the consent agenda as amended. I make a motion we approve the consent agenda as amended. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, thank you. And at this time, we have four business items, five business items now, thank you, Council. Um, first of which is a special event Third Street Farmers Market, uh, business owners of Oak City Collections and Twisted Willow are requesting to hold a farmers market the second and fourth Saturdays from June until October the 14th, from 9 a.m. until 2 p.m. This request includes amplified sound and the closure of the 100 block of South Third Street. Stephen? Oh, there he is at the back. Mm -hmm. um, this event is, I don't have additional information other than what's on this um, application, but the applicants are here, and I would ask them directly if they have any questions. Okay. Any questions for the applicants? Mayor Pro Tem, I have a few comments and questions. I'm telling them thank you for what you are doing. Um, I've heard good things about this event. Um, at our prior session, we did have a discussion, and uh, they were, were going to work with the downtown about the scheduling. Um, I was just curious. My question is, is there any conflicts with other events and how that's going to work out? That's the only question I have. Serious here. <laughs> Okay. So there's no conflicts um, besides the regatta. Okay. Any other questions or comments? The uh, the only question I, I let me say let me say I went to both of them. I thought they were very well attended. I thought you could tell the difference between the first one and the second. First one was good. The second one was better. I mean, and I think it'll be a third one that got rained out would have been better. I think I saw more uh, more farmers was participating, and I think you'll see more farmers participate as they as they go. And you know, I think it was a good event. I was able to walk. Um, uh, I was able to walk, uh, of course, even on Market Street and talk to the people and visit some of the stores in there, and their their traffic was definitely up. So I mean, they were happy about it. Um, so I mean, I think it's a I think it's a great thing. The only question right now, though, is that there's no uh, you know we're not charging any fee for anything. I think that's important 
for the people to come because they're not, you know, they, they don't if they don't have to pay a fee, they show up. And so I think that that is a factor. If they get to a place that has to charge a fee, I'm not sure how that's going to work because you know some do, some don't, and then how the money's balanced. That would be the only question I have. If later on they decide to add a fee to it, um, I'm not sure where to go with that. You know, I think that, it's a that, vendor fee that they're looking at. Do what? Charging a vendor fee. So there's some information on that? I think that is the intent is to, the applicants are here. Yeah, please. Yeah, you're sure. Hey, sir. John Ballot, Twister Willow, 119 South 3rd Street in Smithfield. Uh, we were planning on, if we did get extended through October, that we would uh, do a just a nominal fee of like $25 a booth to get us set up to you know help offset our promotional costs and everything. And one of the, you know, we have received like overwhelming um, positive reviews from everybody that was attending. But uh, the one criticism we did get was not having porta potties. So we were thinking about if we, you know, if we were charging twenty-five dollars a booth, we can get porta potties unless it was something the town would like to help assist with as well. Um, but then we're, we're also hopefully considering doing is if we are extended through October uh, for the last event of the year to potentially have that be a bigger event, possibly get a band um, and make it you know longer than nine till two, so just like an end of the year celebration. So, so can I ask, how's the money? Uh, I mean, uh, again, I, again, I trust you. It's not. The, I'm just looking from the logistic part. How's the money going to be managed? Is the money managed? Are they writing the check to you? Is there a nonprofit set up for this? Is it going through downtown development? You know, I mean, how is the money collected? And then that way, because it, you know, that yeah, yeah, we're planning on doing. If we were extended through October, that we were going to open up a separate account for the farmers market, and it would all be paid into that. And all of our promotional fees will be paid for out of that. And then if we did get a band or whatever we decided to do for the end of the year celebration, then it would all come out of there. So then that means if we if 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 we approve you to continue on, then and you start charging a fee, then you would have some records to bring to us, show you the money collected and what you did with your money. Correct. So we could see because it's only if we approve it again, it's only approved for the year, right? I mean, it might be reapproved for future events. Is that right? I mean, I'm just, I'm asking him this. Yes, <laughs> okay. that is accurate. Come I mean, that's the question people would ask, you know, where's that Fair money, enough. where's it going, you know, how are you collecting the money, you know, is it, is it a nonprofit organization? If it's not a nonprofit, then it's counted as revenue, you know, right. uh, those type of things. That's why I'd, you understand what I mean? Absolutely. Yeah. But I, I, I mean, again, I, I've talked to you every time. Yeah. You know, it was. I think it's been a great event. I really do. I think it's been a great event. Yeah, we're and, very uh, happy with it. Very surprised with the uh, turnout and the number of vendors we've had reach out. So. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Anything else? All right. If there's no other questions, what is? I'll entertain a motion to approve, deny, or table the request. Uh, I make a motion that we approve it through the time period, but I would request that at the end of that time period, they do bring us a financial report to show us where they spent their money. That way we just have it, okay? I think that's important to, that we, we've done due diligence. The money that you collect and what you did with the money, I think that's important as we look for expanding in the future or not, you know? So that's my recommendation. I, I, I vote we do it with a report, financial report at the end. All right, thank you. Is that, no, I mean, is that. That's need, my motion. Is that needed, though? I mean, do we. I want to see it. Okay. When we, I mean, when we all, I see I have one scheduled for June the 10th. I mean, so when we all start charging, I mean. Not this one, but the next one, where we need to talk to the vendors, but I have spent those funds You're talking about recouping some of your money? Yes. yes. We're trying to do this without Sure. So yeah, but this, I mean. That's why we're not tr what? trying to charge them much either, but just so that they hold their boot, I guess. 
but that would still show up in your finances. You say, this is what we contributed in, what we spent the money for, and this is what we got the money. I mean, it would still show up. That's what I'm saying. It would still show up, right? It would wash out. So, yeah. Uh, the, um, of course, my motion is really expanding here. But my, <laughs> the, the I, so let me just say this. I'm going to withdraw my motion at this point so I can make it cleaner, okay? So like I can legally withdraw my motion, correct? So I'm going to withdraw my motion until we clean it up, and then I'll, I'll make a motion again. I'm fine with that too. I'm fine with that too. But um, uh, I also had a, I had a, I had a, I had a I don't want to do it because my question is I know one of the things that I think that, you know, we can't deny certain people to come, but like politics and things like that, I think that you guys have said you really rather them not come, you really can't deny them that per se. But I think maybe in your advertising, if you say we discourage, you know, political events and things like that, because it really is about merchants and it's about farming and it's not about, it's not about uh, running for campaign offices and things like that because that sometimes you're careful that takes the place of all these other things, but you can't really deny them. But you could, in your publication, say you know this is preferred not to have these type of events. You see what I mean? That way you're trying to discourage them at least. I mean, can we not do that? Uh, well, all of them are not farmers either. So if it's a farmers market, everybody needs to be farmers. So we just need to be kind of careful how we. I'm trying to discourage people. It says farmers market. So, how many people are actually farmers? Well, it's a farmers market and an artisan vendor fair. That's how it works. All I see is farmers market. So, I don't, I don't see the added part with what you just said. So, we just, we just going by what we have over here. Excuse me, ma'am. So why call it a farmer's market? That's if you could come situation. and speak into the mic, this is being recorded and it's not going to pick up what y'all are saying no, when y'all are asking <laughs> questions. <laughs> it's about like yeah, that's a good point. It's artisans. It may not say it on the uh, agenda that as it was proposed there, but on our, all of our signage and everything that we've put out for promotions, it is labeled as farmer's market and artisan fair. So, and like I said, we've had over 240 vendors reach out, so we have a huge list of vendors, and I'm not saying that we have 240 great vendors, but we have 240 vendors on our list. So, and we, as the committee, so Oak City Collection and Twisted Willow, we take a look at that list, and when we have someone that can't come back one week, we look to our list and pick what's gonna be best you know, suited to fit that spot. And we don't wanna have everybody out there with one type of product, because then it's not gonna be very well attended. And I, do, I, I was very, it was very, excuse me, it was, it was very, uh, very much uh, enjoyable not to have to face the, all the political stuff. Absolutely. I'm saying that way it was much more, it was non-confrontational because you, you know what I'm saying? I think you part don't have to debate it with anybody, you just see their materials and purchase or don't. And I think part of that too is having it as a free event as it currently sits, having so many people reach out. I would imagine making it $25 a booth, we might lose some of those, 240. But I think most people will still want to be on that list. Um, but I, I think that allows, keeping that fee as low as that is, I think you get a lot more people reaching out and we have a lot to choose from to make it a good show each time. How many people, vendors are there each week? It depends on, well, what we have found is a huge draw is we've had the petting zoo and that takes up like six of our booth spaces when we have the petting zoo there. Now they've told us that they might not be able to come every time depending on the weather. If it's too hot, they don't want to have the animals out in the street. Um, but we will have anywhere probably between 42 to 48 vendors, depending on if we're going to have that, um, you know, the petting zoo taking up a, a big portion of it. We've also told the um, farmers and the produce vendors that are bringing their stuff, as the summer goes on and they have more and more produce to bring, if they would like to have two booth setups instead of just one, since we don't have a bunch of uh, you know, produce and farmer vendors, that they can do that. So. Comments overall, great. Thank you. I've heard a lot of good from all the restaurants downtown, the stores saying definite, it's definite an increase to everybody. 
Um, so thank you all for taking the initiative. I um, guess some more process on our end. Do, you know, we're allowing them to close the street. I mean, I prefer us just stay out. I mean, stay out of worrying about what they're charging and let them, you know, let them figure that out. Is it, you know, I just feel like it's a slippery slope where either it's either our event or it's their event. So, I mean, is that, I guess, more, I mean, is that a normal for us to, to look back into Dr. Barber's request? Thinking back, the only event I can think of where we allowed street closure for basically a private entity yeah. was during um, the river at Regatta where we closed um, the street right alongside the little brown jug to allow them to uh -huh. have music and, and um, uh, entertainment out there while they, you know, sold beer um, and their goods there in the parking lot. Okay. Um, but we did not request anything additional from them. Okay. Um, I just, I mean, I don't really have any opinion to it. I just don't want to get us to, this is their event. You know, if it's charged, I don't know. I don't know. However you want to word it. I mean, I'm in support of the event. This is, really has nothing to do with it other than how we want to manage it. Oh, certainly. So, and we, we, have a, we would have no problem showing you where yeah. the money goes. We're not looking to profit from the booth rent. We, yeah, we're I mean, profiting that's, that's, by drawing that's more your, people in yeah, and I mean, more I don't, traffic. I don't, uh, that's, that's your business. And the only reason why I'm asking for it, not because I question them either. Mm. The reason why I ask for it is to, is to really to protect them because people have things to say. Sure. And if you have documentation, you can prove that what they say is not correct. You know, and so I know they're going to do it right. I know they're going to manage it right. And by having that there, then we can say, if someone says, you know, what all else, then no, 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 no. We get a report from them. We know what they did. Everything's here. It's not a question. You can show that thing. You see what I'm saying? It's really to protect you more so than it is us. Because, again, really to his point, we're not going to manage it at all. I mean, you know, you guys are going to manage it all. So we're not doing anything with it. Um, I don't, hopefully we'll help promote it. I mean, I would, so, so yeah. uh, you know, I plan to attend as much as possible too, to, you know, around and promote, but, but I'm saying that's to me, the reason for doing it is more to protect you guys from people. Cause we already know people are going to take shots at you. Mm -hmm. And so if we can do something to, to ensure that that's, that we have due diligence to protect, that's what I wanted to do. That's the reason why I asked for it. Not because I question anything you do with it. Um, can there, oh, one other question though, is there a possibility that you can say that you're going to limit your per booth to no more than $25? I think we can pretty comfortably say that, yes. Okay, that's, that would also be important. That way we know it's only, well, it's a 25, it's not more than $25. Right. So um, now they want multiple booths, that would be something you have to decide on whether you charge them twice a booth or not. You know what I'm saying? That would, per slot, right? Right. right. You would, you, to point is, you don't have a problem with, with providing us uh, 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 the, the, your, um, your financial records when you're done at the end of the year. Is that what you're saying? I don't have a problem with that. Okay. So it's not an issue with you if you did it. Okay. You made a motion, withdrew it. And now I'm going to make it again. <laughs> Okay. Well, okay. Up, yeah, I, I understand what I was asking too many questions during the motion I already made, so I wanted to fix that. So uh, I make a motion that we approve their event through their date of October 14th. Um, and um, I am not going to include the statement about financial stuff because I'm assuming you're going to provide it to us anyway. So I just make a motion we approve the event. Second. I'm fair. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Yes, thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank, thank you. Thank you. All right. Uh, up next, we have consideration request to approve to adopt the Parks and Rec Comprehensive Master Plan. Gary Johnson. Uh, Mayor Pro Tem and Council, thank you for allowing me to come back up tonight. Um, at the April 4th meeting, we presented the um, comprehensive master plan as performed by McAdams. Just wanted to bring it back to you guys, give you guys a chance to um, go through it, review it, and we want to get it adopted so we can move forward with, with the plan. It's a guideline for the next 10 years. Nothing in it is absolute. It provides a guideline for our parks, for our service, for our staffing and whatnot for the Parks and Recreation and Aquatic Center. 
I guess basically my question is, do y'all have any questions from when the uh, plan was presented? Any questions for Gary? So the, 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 the plan is just, it is, again, it is a guideline. It's not a requirement that we meet any of those obligations. It's a guideline of what we're looking at, the needs and things of that nature, but it's not a requirement because all the requirements still have to come back through us eventually anyway. Exactly. Yeah, so it's just a guideline. I mean, it's a, it's a good guideline. It's a good guide <laughs> to move the department forward right, for right, the next right. 10 years. Right, right, It's comprehensive done, but okay. Right. But it doesn't commit us to anything is my point being. That's just a... Mayor Pro Tem, I have a couple of comments. Gary, thank you. And um, I've reviewed that again. And um, it was very impressive, the data that was put together and how it was unified in not only the expense, but the, the needs and also some of the wants. And I still um, hope that as we go into our future planning, um, that we can sp pay special attention to some of those requests. Uh, specifically, the thing that stands out to me with some of the environmental stuff with the fishing request and stuff. I certainly hope that that becomes a high priority for our committees, um, for your recreation committee, and um, that we can develop some areas that are safe for people to enjoy fishing. Mm -hmm. I know we've got the river, we've got a pond in West Smithfield, and we have the spot out there by the college that would be a really unique spot in East Smithfield. Um, but I just, uh, that one thing stood out to me boldly. And not only that, um, I think it only goes without saying to state that I'm very proud of you and your staff for the s programs that you offer, the, the quality of what the parks are, the conditions of them, because a lot of communities Don't have that. do not have those facilities. Um, and I know it comes at an expense. Uh, we learned tonight, well, we knew, but we were so, it's 15% of our general fund, but it's important that we maintain it. And But um, I... I I enjoyed reviewing that because that's something I don't have a lot of knowledge on, but uh, I just wanted to make those comments. Any other questions for Gary? If, will that be, um, I'm sure it will be, but can we make that available to the public too? I mean, yeah, we'll sure. put it on, we can, I have it in a PDF form, we can actually put it on the website. Once okay. Once that's it's adopted. Good. Thank you. I'll make a motion to approve the plan. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Thank you, Gary. Thank you. Uh, up next, we have consideration request for approval to enter into an agreement with Withers Ravenel in the amount of $52,500 for identification and classification of all water service lines in the town service area. Ted? Gentlemen. Gentlemen, thank you for allowing me to speak tonight. I'm here to request approval of a qualified engineering consulting firm to provide services related to the lead and copper inventory the town will have to perform in order to comply with enacted federal legislation. So the EPA's lead and copper rule, or LCR, has been codified since 1991 in an effort to control lead and copper exposure in drinking water. Such exposure uh, can lead to health problems ranging from stomach distress and disease to brain damage. In 2016, the EPA, after already having updated that rule a few times in its history, um, began to re-examine the monitoring aspect of this rule. What came to pass was the 2021 revised rule, which was designed to better protect children at schools and daycare facilities. Part of this rule was to have every water system in the United States inventory their distribution system for lead and copper all the way into each individual home. In August of 2022, the EPA released guidelines on how to implement such an inventory. The EPA will create a database for every water system and delegate each state environmental agency to manage that database in an effort to find all the lead and copper in the US. The deadline for populating such a database is October of 2024. Such an undertaking, as you can imagine, could well take more than a year. 
So the town advertised for help. <clears throat> in early May, we put out an RFQ. Staff settled on Withers and Ravenel as a local firm that possesses proper qualifications and similar experience to assist the town in this task. There's also the possibility that we could get some state funding to assist with this process. As you recall, in April, the council did approve a resolution required for such an application um, for the funding. And it was Withers and Ravenel that helped us put the package together and submit it on the town's behalf. The consultant will perform a deep dive into county building records, archive town plans, and dated deeds to find possible areas where lead and copper are likely to exist in construction. Also, for what is deemed as representative areas, some door-to-door -door investigations will have to occur by speaking with residents to understand when neighborhoods were constructed or certain homes were improved. The representative areas will be examined and cataloged into the database to fulfill government requirements of inventory. As this rule is predominantly concerned with residential structures uh, and its background, a large focus is placed on residential areas as representative. However, the 2021 update was focused largely on uh, children with schools and, and child care, so they will be included in the in-person investigations as well. They will cover both water systems, the town of Smithfield and the Smithfield South Water District. And this is an illustration of where some of those representative areas may be used for each system. So staff is asking for council to approve Withers and Ravenel as the consultant for such services, authorize the town manager to execute a contract for services with a budget not to exceed 52,500. And then thank you for allowing me to present this tonight and I'd be happy to answer any questions should you have them. Thank you, Mr. Credo. Any questions for Ted at this time? You got any, in your professional knowledge, any idea how much we might be sitting on of lead and copper pipes? So, so the, the, the time things, the credit, anything that was built after a certain date, I think it was 84, 85, EPA outlawed lead, yes, you're yes. safe, right? Newer homes, there's no lead and copper in them unless you went to Lowe's and got a new kitchen faucet, which has lead in it. <laughs> so um, we know there are some goosenecks in town. Uh, we know there are some older construction. Things before, I think, 19, the, anything that was built before World War II is probably safe. We don't know that. So there's going to be a lot of knocking on doors, I think, in these areas. Uh, if you can imagine a larger city, let's say Raleigh, or Charlotte, how, how do you do such a thing to, to go through an entire, so you, so you do pick representative areas. And, and I think what we have in Smithfield are some really good spots, some are older, some are newer, and you can go through that and at least get a, a start. I mean, nobody, I don't think anyone really expects to dig it all out within the next year, but we'll certainly get a good look. So is this going to be a test where they just interview people or are they going to actually physically inspect stuff? And, we, and another part of that question would be is the town would be looking at our system primarily from the meters back to the water plant, correct? Well, we're going to be – the rules for us to look at everything, including what's in individual homes. So this will be knocking on doors at times. Um, the really – the tricky part is if you were to go to a big box store, if you had a bathroom faucet that leaked and you go to a big box store and say, I want one that's American made because there's no lead in American made, it's very difficult to find nowadays because everything in your big box store, I don't want to, because they're the orange one and the blue one, both are the same thing. They're lead and they're from China. Um, so it, it's, it's going to be very difficult to do. Um, but We've got to. We've got to at least try. You know, we've got to do it by law. So, we're going to give it the best shot we got. So, what do you do after you determine? Uh, what do you do? I mean, that is the most logical question. Uh, there's no. Everyone understands. We kind of in the water business where this is going. Um, they're going to make us somebody um, take it out. Who's responsible for that is a question yet to be determined. How do you pay for that is a question yet to be determined. Um, but that's obviously where it's going because um, nobody wants to see anything like Flint, Michigan in their town. 
But we not say, though, that we're responsible. I mean, again, we have always been, re- if something breaks beyond the water thing, I'm responsible. I got no choice. I mean, I'm responsible or it goes broke. I mean, that's just, so I don't know how the town could be held accountable for anything beyond their point. You can tell them about it, but what are you going to do? Make them mandatory? You'll go to police and there's going to be, there's going to be pipe, pipe police now? The EPA will okay. pass the law, whatever the, the EPA does. That, that's right? correct. All we're doing is doing the evaluation. That's all we are. Okay. We, are, we have to do the inventory right now. Correct. Okay. So these records will reflect potentially where the threat's at. Correct. I mean, you will know, well, that's internal of the house, that's a town. So we can at least work on making sure our stuff's compliant, but then that whole other step comes up would be my concern too. Yeah, but again, if you think of a bigger city, oh yeah, like Philadelphia, or an older city in the East Coast, Philadelphia or Baltimore. <laughs> so my question is though, so if they have lead pipe, and we're worried because the lead runs into the water, right? That's, a, that's our problem. It goes into the water, and it goes into the sewer system, right? Can you guys not measure the iron in the, or the county, measure the amount of iron in the sewage? Because the water goes down the drain and goes back to the, I mean. Uh, the logistics what, of that is putting a monitor in, that is that um, sensitive into an open uh, gravity flow pipe and then knowing where it's coming from. It, it's it's a lot easier just because you know sewer pipes weren't made with lead, so it'd be a lot easier to do the water lines than it would be the sewer lines. Do we do any lead or copper sampling? Yes, yes. How's that process work? Well, we we pull water samples and we send them to labs. Home and we, level, I think, to doc, as, at Dr. Barber's point, at the home level, or are we doing it? We no, we where get along individual. The line are you testing it? We we uh, every couple of years uh, we have representative sites and we offer incentives to homeowners uh, to give us uh, in the morning and we give them the bottles, they give us the samples and I think we give them $20 on the bill or something like that to do that and we send it off and that's that's the current requirement. Have we ever had any? Oh yeah, oh yeah. We've had a couple hits and when we do, we have to notify them and and again, uh, as of now, it's, it's on them to make the fix uh, but we have to notify them. We have to notify. It's in our uh, annual report uh, if we have any hits, and we we do we make it public. Um, and again, it was a newer. The most the one that popped to mind was a newer home that was remodeled, and it it, it showed presence of lead. Do you have to do every faucet though? Because Mm-mm. no, it's a. Uh, the requirement was a faucet. It does not specify bathroom, kitchen, or spigot on the side of the house. It just has to be what's known as the first flush in the morning. So you can't let the water run for 10 minutes. You just uh-huh. want to go ahead and psh, psh, be done. So the, the lead is more likely to be in the line going to the house he, than, the, than the lines well, inside the house? Generally, lead's in the gooseneck and the connections, and the copper's usually on the piping. It's because type K copper is normally, that's pretty common. So it's in the, so it's, it's in the, like the okay. The connections. The, the grant that we applied for, how much was that grant? Uh, it's, uh, I think what you can get up to a certain amount and then they can give you any discretionary in the middle. I think the up to amount was uh, 150,000. But if this is now required every Town, yeah, yeah, is going to apply for those same. That's grants. correct. So. That's correct. But again, we're we're only at the point now of identifying. This is inventory right now. Right, but every town has to do that. Every same town, thing. every ca- the county, every municipality, every water system, even if it's private, like Aqua and NC, has to do it as well. It sounds like to me you ought to run your water in the morning before you drink it. What you're saying? Get through the gooseneck. <laughs> if you think you have a problem, but most newer homes don't have, you know, everyone out on East River, there's not, not a problem. They're, they're new. Unless they upgraded their faucets. Uh, I'm not going, yes, sir. I will not argue with your wisdom, sir. So when, Mr. Is the, when did you say the deadline was for that? October of 2024. Okay. Mr. Credo, how are we going to, is this budgeted for next year in, in our... Uh, I would, that was in, uh, I don't have the action form with me, but where we're getting it from, 
I believe was in your action form, sir. And did you have more than one bid? No, I did not. The only people that submitted. I do not have to re-advertise because it's a, uh, it doesn't apply. Yeah, it's coming out of the East Smithfield Capital Project. Yep. Mayor Pro Tem, I'll make a motion. We approve the request for this second. study. Second. All right. Motion and a second. All in favor? Uh, Aye. All right. Thank you. Thank you, gentlemen. All right. Business item number four. We have consideration of request for approval to adopt resolution number 729-12-2023, supporting the study of a water and sewer authority in Johnston County. Mr. Manager. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, pro tem. Um, in front of you tonight is resolution number 729, supporting the study of a water and sewer authority in Johnston County. Now, I want to emphasize that this is support, supporting the study of a water and sewer authority in Johnston County, not in entertaining the idea of creating and, and being a part of it or authorizing being a part of it. Uh, it's only authorizing or making a resolution that we want to seat at the table to discuss this issue with everybody else. So water and sewer authority is by statute a separate entity outside of a government entity that runs something like a water and sewer operation. So what does this look like? Um, this could be a member of every single city and the county of Johnston going together, putting all of their enterprise funds for water and sewer together into one place with a separate board outside of our city, outside of the county, outside of all the municipalities to operate and run it. So what that would create is a, like what you have out at the beach uh, and is on WASA, which is a separate authority for water and sewer. Um, every single entity in Johnston County would then have the same water and sewer rate based on the type of operation they have. All residential would be the same. And then based on likely meter size, everybody with a particular meter size would be the same. Um, so you wouldn't have a lot of different rate structures operating throughout the county. Uh, this board that would be created would look something like uh, a representative from the town of Smithfield, a representative from every other municipality that wants to participate, a representative from Johnston County. Um, how that makeup uh, exists or would be created would be up to a steering committee. And part of this resolution is the creation or the approval of Smithfield to be a part of that steering committee. Um, but the idea of an authority is to not have any one entity ha be able to monopolize the decisions involved in that authority. So it truly is a consortium group ran by a separate board. Um, and it would operate all of the water and sewer of all of the members of that authority. Um, what the resolution in front of you tonight was hatched out of an idea um, brought about by several uh, meetings with discussions involving the county, as well as mayors in our community. I think Councilman Lee attended one of the meetings. Uh, I attended one of the meetings. Um, and the meeting that I attended, we had a representative who's retired CEO of Anwasa out at the beach, and he had a lot of interesting information to share. Um, and a steering committee would get into all of that information. But what's asked of you tonight is to decide if you want to have a seat at the table to discuss the possibility of a water and sewer authority and Smithfield being a member of it. That is all. Um, if you want a seat at the table to be a part of those discussions, 
then I would recommend you approve this resolution. All the cities and Johnston County is being asked to approve the same resolution if they want to be a part, if they want to have a seat at this table to discuss it. Um, I, I can't make it any simpler than that. Uh, I'd be glad to answer any questions you might have or, or provide any clarity um, uh, involving in this possibility. I think any time governments can join services and truly join services, not just give the service to another entity, but join services, it's a positive thing for the public. Um, joining <coughs> services reduces resources and reduce costs. Uh, that's just the reality of it. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Questions for the manager at this time? Yeah, so, um, you know, I, I know what you're saying as far as, uh, uh, you know, obviously economy of scale is very important, but, um, you know, we also know that uh, a, 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 an agreement today, 50 years later, can be totally a different agreement. We've all felt, felt that burden of those agreements that seemed really good at the time 50 years ago that, uh, uh, that were promises made not kept or at least not interpreted the same way that wound up not necessarily being a good decision for the town of Smithfield, not necessarily one way or the other, but the point is that I, you know, I'm concerned about uh, you know, um, uh, these type of things. I don't have a problem necessarily being you know, part of the discussion because I think it's important to discuss it, but I'm also concerned that I don't want to, in any way being part of this discussion to give those that are in charge the thought that uh, we're, we're, that we're any way committed to doing anything. Uh, I think we, you know, we spend a lot of money on our own water system. We have plenty of water for our future because we're not short-sighted. Um, you know, if, we had, if we'd had our sewer system, we wouldn't have given it up then either. I mean, I'm just saying, so, you know, because we believe we need to make sure we can provide. And the issues we've had with growth is because we haven't owned our own sewer system. That's why we have problems with not being able to do some of the work that we need to do because it was given to other people. That's part of a general plan. And so, you know, I'm just, but, you know, I'm not opposed to being part of a, of a study, but I definitely am concerned about uh, uh, people may getting the wrong idea that because we agree to be part of a study that we're going to, in any way, they should take that as a thought that we're uh, more than just want to be part of the discussion, that we're not necessarily in any way favoring moving in that direction. You understand what I'm saying? I do, and I think it's good to be suspicious. I think it's good to be on guard and to make sure that we know every detail of what's going on. Um, you know, this is a big issue. Uh, it may be a very positive thing, and it may, may not. Um, until, you know, it's discussed and all those things are meted out and you see what this looks like, we're, we're talking about a process that will take years, not months or weeks. Um, this is a slow process. It's going to be tedious. It's going to require a lot of work, um, both from a staff level and, and, you know, there's going to have to be representation from the council, too. Um, so it, it's going to be an ongoing work in progress for quite a while to determine if this is something that fits Smithfield or it doesn't. But certainly, I would never encourage the council... Uh, to become involved in any commitment to anything that would commit our resources or our enterprise funds to anything without, you know, really meeting out all those issues. Mayor Pro Tem, I have a couple of comments. Mike, thank you for bringing us tonight. And um, I, I do wanted to address a couple of things. Um, the first thing is, uh, this is very similar to what happened years ago and um, with the 201 study that led to a lot of grant funding, but there's quite a few contrasts from that to this time. Um, things that come to mind for me is you, the town of Smithfield was responsible and led the charge for many things related to water sewer, um, and we did, in fact, have a functioning plan, and when that plan come together that brought West Smithfield 
that brought the other areas online. It, but we've always been a good partner. But I'm still concerned that we didn't get as good a deal out of that as we did. However, um, the county has uh, the the things have changed now. The county budget is a lot larger than what Smithfield is, and they are doing things too that help communities. Um, you know, for example, Wilson Mills they put in some pipes for us. I mean, there's a lot of things that's going on. I, I am. I stand firm with Councilman Barber and his concerns, and I, I do think it's important for us to pay very attention. But I'm not opposed to us sitting at the table and having a discussion. But uh, this this program, um, we do have plenty of clean water right now and with the investment of the water plant. But we also, for our cash flow to be successful, the model has to work that we have to still be a partner with others. But I do want to point out one thing. Looking at the big picture, looking at the, the, the this budget, past budgets, and comparing other communities, other towns, Smithfield, we do not have control over the sewer rate at all, hardly. Without, We have to pay what it takes to process. But we are downstream to some others, but our water rates are the best, and we need to focus to keep it that way. Um, if this helps us maintain the best and we can help others, fine. If not, perhaps we need to think about it differently. But uh, I'm excited that the, uh, I understand that there's an uh, initiative here and having that partnership with others is, is hugely important. That's all I have to say. Yep. Any other discussion on the resolution? If not, what is the pleasure of the board? I, I, yeah, huh? Yeah, I am. Is that cool? Yeah. Um, I, I make a motion that we approve the resolution with the understanding that we're not committing anything beyond that. So that be communicated. We approve the resolution, but they understand that we're not committed to anything beyond that. Page 116, it tells you it's non binding. So it's I understand, but I want, the, I want to make sure when they hand this to them, understand we voted that we don't, we're not going any, we're not committed to anything beyond that. Table, but that's, it. that's exactly right. All right. Thank you, that's my motion. I second the motion. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. And as a second part of this, they're going to ask that we select one member to yeah, sit on the committee. Uh, at this, that does not have to be decided at this time. Yeah. And currently we have the mayor and uh, one council member out, so I would suggest that we probably okay. not take any action on that right. currently. Yep. Is that an action that we want to bring back to the board then? Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, we'll bring table that to the next meeting perhaps. Very well. Just for the record, Mike, um, the mayor has been very active in this and um, – I don't know if it needs to take action or not, but I would support him in, uh, because he's already been involved in these things. Of course, any of us could, but I think it's important, or even staff. Um, but, the makeup? Yeah, it's a political. But I, I just want to make that, I mean, we could talk to him. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Uh, last item on the business agenda is consideration or request to approve to adopt year-end budget amendments. Mr. Seiler. Councilman, so we bring these um, budget amendments and encumbrances before you tonight um, with the hope of uh, not having to meet again this, this month. Um, I can appreciate that you haven't really had sufficient time uh, to look over the material. Um, so I encourage you to please ask questions about this process if any of it is unclear. Um, there are three separate attachments <clears throat> given to you. Um, the first is year-end budget amendments. Um, the only thing I really want to say about that, unless you have questions, is that as we ramped up some of these budgets, um, only contingency monies were used, no fund balances. Um, 
Attachment number two are um, departmental request to encumbers monies um, into the new year on um, projects that didn't oh, there it is. Uh, get carried out or um, the intentions of the money uh, just didn't come to fruition. Um, then attachment three are um, a list of purchase orders uh, on which, um, on many of them, uh, items have been ordered, uh, but either haven't come in or we haven't been invoiced. Um, this list before you, the encumbrances, is a wish list. I come before you in the new year, typically late September or October, um, with the actual final encumbrance that gets reported in our audit. So <clears throat> there are some things, especially on the purchase order list, that will get satisfied and liquidated. Uh, but as it stands right now, these things are outstanding. Um, finally, I want to remind you that each of the three attachments has to be um, approved separately. Um, so with that, do you have any questions? Questions for Greg at this time? Huh? It's, uh, it's just because it's three funds. Greg, the reason you're requesting three motions is because it's three separate funds. Is that correct? No. It's, it's again, it's budget amendments for the entire town, purchase orders that, uh, that we haven't been invoiced for and or items haven't come in, and then... Um, the third item, or actually it's item number two, are just um, budget purposes that the monies either weren't used because projects weren't completed, the time frame just hasn't come about, um, or projects just weren't uh, accomplished in time. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Councilman, the real basic reason is because our auditors ask us to do it that way. Okay, understood. <laughs> All right. This is a process that uh, all municipalities do um, because the budget process is not an exact science. Um, spending uh, has been curtailed, actually stopped at this point. Uh, the only exp new expenditures that take place between now and June 30th are emergency events, something that we couldn't possibly prepare for. Any more questions for Greg? Greg, there's no additional monies put into this. It's all budget monies, right? It's there's all budget no monies. no fund balance being appropriated, no additional monies coming from anywhere, it's just money basically being moved around in the existing budget. That's correct. Mayor Pro Tem, I'll make a motion, the first motion of this, uh, that we uh, approve the year-end budget adjustments for 22-23 fiscal Second. year. All in favor? Aye. Uh. Mayor Pro Tem, I would move that we uh, approve year-end project and purchase encumbrance as documented for fiscal year 22 and 23. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh. Uh. And Mayor Pro Tem, I would move that we approve a year end purchase encumbrance um, for 22 23. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, All right. Thank you much. Thank you, Greg. I will add that if you can't sleep at night and you pick this up and you look at it and you have a question, <laughs> let us know. <laughs> also, Council, I'll also add that um, we had kind of reserved. Uh, uh, the 20, 20th of this month for another special meeting for this purpose. Um, since Greg was able to get it all together and estimate this out and you were able to approve it tonight, that meeting will not be needed. Wonderful. Great. Thank all right. Much. At this time, we will open it up for council members' comments. Mm -hmm. 
I got a couple of um, Mr. Mayor Pro Tim. Um, first of all, I just want, he don't really come to the meetings now unless I'm getting sworn in, but uh, my dad is going to turn 80 years old tomorrow, so I just want to give my dad a shout out. Um, also, um, this was my Get Gary uh, meeting tonight, but um, the, the guys from the Boy Scouts, uh, they, they bailed him out. But now nah, I just want to thank um, Mr. Banks Gaskins and um, also his dad, Mr. Jonathan Gaskins. I forgot what troop they was from, but they went out to Smith Collins Park and built um, two um, nice set of uh, horseshoe pits. Um, the guys out there, I mean, they do throw on Sundays, and I told them a few years ago that y'all had some – Pits coming, and every weekend they was asking me, and finally um, they got put up. But they, no, they real nice, and um, I definitely like to thank um, those men, um, those uh, from the Boy Scout troops, and um, Shannon. Um, I'll probably be coming by tomorrow just to get a thank you letter to send to them. But um, I do like to thank you, Gary, for that leadership too, because them guys they they play in horseshoes. Um, um, just also real quick um, uh, to. Interim Chief Grady, um, of course, you know, school's getting ready to get out. Um, this is just me reporting every month, you know, police officer-wise. Um, you know, the splash pad is taking off. Um, kids are in the park. They're walking up and down the streets. And, you know, just, you know, we could just get that presence. And not just police, you know, officers just, you know, going and pulling over in the, you know, corner somewhere and just, you know, but just really getting out there, talking to the kids, just doing whatever. And this kind of flashbacks to about two weekends ago. Um, I attended a funeral um, of a, a lady who grew up here in Smithfield. And um, at that funeral, there was one white guy in there, and he was asked to give remarks. And that was our former chief, Chief Powell. And what the preacher kept preaching on was this had to be a powerful lady for the former chief, police chief, to come in and give remarks. And, you know, it, it was just all about the relationship. So, I mean, relationships, relationships. If, you know, if those police officers can get out and interact, you know, you know, with the with the kids, with the community, I, I think, you know, it in the long run, it, it could help. So um I just appreciate your leadership on that. And um then finally, um I know I missed a couple of budget sessions right there at the end. And I know we was going through the non-departmental um, and we was talking about the schools or whatever. Um, tonight, when um, uh, Mr. Barber prayed, uh, one of the words that he used was fair. And going back to one of the budget sessions that we even actually talked about was um, the early college over there. Mr. Barber even posed a question um, that night. And um, they was one of the schools that I texted that principal that night. He didn't know anything about, you know, this budget process. Um, the next day, uh, our town clerk reached out to him. I guess he got some paperwork filled in. But it then kind of hurt me to see that they was left out, knowing they didn't know anything about the budget process. I mean, I saw where um, all the schools got awarded $1,500. And I mean, that, that was a minute amount, but still, you know, for somebody that didn't even know about the process, filled out some paperwork the next day, and then, you know, but uh, we talk about fairness, I mean, $1,500, and, and I looked through the budget and other things and stuff, I mean, we'll spend money on on whatever, but I just thought that that wasn't fair, so I just wanted to, just wanted to kind of say that. That's all I have. Um, Juneteenth celebration is gonna be June. On uh, the 17th, everybody come on out to Smith Collins Park. Um, music, food, fun, fellowship. Uh, we'll parade that morning once again uh, from the Coach Reginald Ennis Pavilion um, down to Smith Collins Park. So everybody um, just come out for a good day. And I got two more days to graduation, so I'm about there. <laughs> Thank you, Councilman Lee. Anyone else? If not, uh, I'd like to say thank you for everyone who put in the hard work, especially the staff on pulling the budget together, as well as the time that we put in. Um, it's never easy to get through that. It's a lot of long hours, uh, but I think with the decisions that were made, I think we'll have a 
another successful run. Thank you for all the hard work for the staff and council. If nothing else, turn it over to the manager. Manager's report. Thank you, sir. I don't have anything tonight. Um, I only will again reiterate that the uh, Greenway Trail is back open, so hopefully people will get out there and use it. Um, it's a little bit different configuration than what it was originally, um, but it's still a, a great place to walk and exercise and ride your bike, take your children, walk your dog, um, whatever type of exercise you enjoy. So, thank you. All right, thank you, Mr. Manager. At this time, we will need to go into closed session uh, pursuant to North Carolina General Statute 143-318-11A6 to discuss a personnel matter. So moved, Mayor Pro Tem. Second. All in favor? Uh-huh. All those? 